Hello everyone, Arlisha here and welcome to another video. Today we are getting out the gouache and starting a new series in which I will be painting scenes from my favorite movies starting with this scene from 2005's Pride and Prejudice and if you've seen this movie you will know that I could have paused this one literally anywhere and had a beautiful scene to paint because it is just such a beautiful film. I, I love it so much. It's definitely the movie that I have watched the most times. And this is a series that I have been wanting to do for so long. And to be honest, I've just been really, really scared to do it. But I did try. Actually, a couple of years ago, I started filming this. So I actually found and threw away a half painted scene from Howl's Moving Castle like a year ago. So it's been a long time that I've been wanting to do this series. And like I said, it's it's been frightening me. There's something about the interpretation that is like more specific when you're working to recreate a screenshot. I work with reference all the time, so that particular part of this process isn't new to me, but when it comes to recreating a scene, it's much more specific, and the standard for accuracy is like a bit more rigid. So usually when I'm painting, I do a lot of interpreting with my, with my reference photos, so I'm not really going for a specific likeness or to make it look exactly like the atmosphere of whatever references I'm using. I mean, I can just take it and use bits and pieces. But when it comes to capturing a scene like this, even if I don't necessarily want the painting to look exactly like the screenshot, I want it to be close and I want to capture how it makes me feel. So there are a lot of similarities, but it is a much more specific process and something that I have never really undertaken as far as like trying to be this particular with capturing likenesses and capturing the atmosphere. I was really excited when I started this one because I decided to do a sort of blue underpainting. This is something that I really enjoy, this particular step, and I wish that I had kept more of this cool underpainting tone. To be honest, I wish that I had made this even more blue, like just a more saturated blue and allowed that to peek through even more. I think that it did cool down my final tones, like when the painting is all finished and done, but I'd like to push that sort of thing even more in the future. I would love to know what you all think of a series like this, if you would like to see more of these and if you have a particular movie that is your favorite please let me know um, i i have a list of favorite movies that i would love to paint from some that are i want to paint from them just because they're my favorite movies and some i just think would be beautiful to look through and to paint from so the, the list goes on and on i'm even i'm considering dedicating this entire sketchbook just to these. I am using a smaller Etcher sketchbook. This is their Etcher Everyday sketchbook, I think. And this is the Hot Press sketchbook, which is brand new to me. I've actually only ever used their cold press sketchbook, so this is the first time I am using that. And I'm also using my M. Graham gouache, fresh out of the tubes. And I love M. Graham gouache. It's absolutely phenomenal. I thought I would choose a more specific limited palette at first, but I ended up going with some pretty standard colors, which you saw in the beginning of this video, and it was really fun to just mix my colors. It's always a little bit of a scary thing for me working with gouache, especially when I'm working with non-jelly gouache. I feel like the jelly gouache doesn't shift quite as much from wet to dry, but gouache like this, in my experience, shifts a lot more. So I was very regularly 
laying down a few colors and then using my heat tool to dry the colors so I could see what it looked like before I started working on the next ones. And you can see it a lot of times when I lay down a color, you can see it shifting in value like as soon as I put it down. And I know that when I first got started with gouache, that was the most frustrating thing about working with this medium was that it was so hard to predict what color I was going to get. And that's something that you kind of adjust to over time, but also you just learn to work with it and to be patient with it. And really for me to take the time to dry sections in between, even if I haven't finished an entire layer, just taking the time to let it dry or to dry it myself with my heat tool is extremely helpful because then I don't have to guess what value it's going to be. I can just see it and then move on from there. I've put off this project for so long because because the movies that are the most special to me really mean a lot and I was worried that I wouldn't be able to do them justice. I feel like it's a really big undertaking to try to capture the atmosphere of something that just feels so big and so important and this movie is definitely the one that I have watched the most times. I read the novel Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I remember having to read it for high school and I fell in love with the story and I know it's a little bit blasphemous to say that I like this movie more than I like the novel, but that's that's just the way it is for me. I love the movie. It's beautiful and it's cinematic and I know that there are other versions of this as a film adaptation, but there's something about the beauty of this particular movie. It has like the story of a Jane Austen novel and the atmosphere and intentional emotional damage of like a Charlotte Bronte novel. And the combination of those two things together makes this a movie that I watch at least twice a year or any time when I'm feeling like sappy and I don't really feel like doing anything else, I can just put this movie on and it's very comforting and cozy for me. I'm really looking forward to adding more and more of these sorts of screenshots to this series. I'm planning to do not just character sketches like this one, but also lots of landscapes, and it's hard for me to not just jump into like six more Pride and Prejudice ones. I want to mix it up, especially for the video series. Maybe I'll work on some more from this film, like in my own spare time. But I really do want this to be an opportunity to push myself and do landscape practices. And it feels like capturing special movie moments that are important to me is like a really great way to do that.
was younger relating to Elizabeth Bennet a lot as someone who also grew up poor and has a lot of siblings. I admired her independence and her sort of wild spirit when I was younger, but the older I get, the more I relate to Darcy. I know that this character is portrayed a bit differently in this particular movie than how he's usually seen in the book. I think that in the book he's a bit more of a person who just is kind of a jerk and then has to work through his jerkiness to communicate how he feels. And in this particular movie, we see a bit more of his pain and social awkwardness and sadness, maybe a little bit, especially in this particular scene. And every time I watch this movie, I just appreciate all of the characters more and more. When it came to painting this scene, I knew that Darcy was going to be the focus and I wanted everything else to just complement the atmosphere, even the little bit of Elizabeth that we can see off to the side. If you look at the screenshot, she's obviously out of focus because in this shot we're focusing on Darcy and his emotions. So I was working wet on wet a lot when I was painting this bit of Elizabeth and I really wanted her to just be more a part of the scene than trying to capture like any particular likeness or emotion with her. We're really just seeing like the back side of her head and I wanted it to do more in lending to the overall composition than in actually like representing her character. And I'm pretty happy with how that went. I think my favorite part of this entire painting might have been working on his hair. I just really enjoyed those brush strokes and trying to capture like the rhythm of it. There's some pieces that do wave a little bit, but there's also lots of little bits that just stick out straight. And I didn't push too hard in trying to capture the wetness of this whole scene because it is raining. And that's something that I will work towards more in the future, I think. And it's not even something that would have taken too long to go, hey, it's raining and to put that into the scene. But I was really happy stopping at this point and I'm still so so very pleased with the atmosphere I managed to capture. I spent about half a second debating whether or not I wanted to paint the borders of this black and in the end I felt like the scene really needed it to reinforce the cinematic nature of the entire thing and I do think the black frames the scene really well. At this point, I was laying everything out and setting it up for the final shot and going, okay, it's done, I'm done. I was really happy with it. And it dawned on me at this moment that his mouth was really crooked. Like for whatever reason, it was just veering way off to the one side. So I got my palette knife out just to visualize a straight line from his nose down to his chin. And I was like, oh yeah, look at that. That's his mouth is going somewhere. And so I did do a little bit of working on his mouth to, to lengthen it a bit more to the one side. And then I moved the line of the middle of his mouth over to one side. And in the end, I was able to, with very few brush strokes, to line up his mouth with his nose. But now if you draw a straight line from between his eyebrows down through his mouth, it's pretty straight, but if you draw a line from the top of his head to his chin, the entire face is off a little bit from his chin. And it's still a little off, but to be honest, I really like it and I'm not going to change it and I'm really happy with how it looks.
Just to show you an example of what I mean, I took it into Photoshop and used the liquify tool to reposition his face a little bit. So this is what it would look like if it was actually straight. But either way, I'm really happy with how it turned out. If you liked this video, let me know by leaving a like or a comment. Let me know if you've seen this movie and how you feel about it. If you've read the book, any other scenes that you think I should paint, I am so, so, so very excited to do more of these. And I'm really happy that I pushed myself and finally just made it happen. As always, a huge thank you to my members here on YouTube and my patrons over on Patreon. I'm so grateful to all of you for your support and you're all welcome to check out those platforms if you're interested in supporting me or this channel further. It's because of the support from these people that I'm able to invest time into passion projects like this and create this fun stuff to share with all of you. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I'm excited to do more of them and I will see you all next week. Bye bye.